What's going on, everybody? Daniel here, and uh, yeah, we're back with the main event, and tonight we are doing Royal Rumble. No friends, 30 opponents. Oh yeah. We're traveling back to January 15th, 1989. Uh, we're at the Summit in Houston, Texas. And uh, yeah, the main event is the Royal Rumble. Um, yes, this is the, to me, I don't care. I know there's been some before this, but this is the first real Royal Rumble. The previous year was on pay-per-view. It's on the USA Network. And it was only 20 men. A 20 men rumble. Uh, and they've had some, even before that, you know, when they were kind of tinkering with the idea of the Royal Rumble and they just, you know, traveled around and whatnot. Uh, but to me, I mean, let's face it, this is the first Royal Rumble. For all intent and purpose, this is it. Um, this is not necessarily this one right here, but the event itself is like my second favorite pay per view, period. Like, it's a cloak called this and the Survivor Series. Uh, the old school Survivor Series. They're really old school Rumbles as well. Because uh, this was, you know, back when it was, you know, you enter every two minutes, you actually got a wrestling match in there. I mean, it actually meant something if you were number one and you won or went through, you know, whatever uh, back in the day because it was like, you know, you actually had to endure. Like now they just release you like every five seconds. They're like, ah, fuck it, just all run out there. It don't even matter. It doesn't even matter now. So, uh, I, don't know what the, I don't know what the time is now. I haven't watched a Royal Rumble in a while. Like, what is it, every minute now? They just don't even care. They're like, eh. Every 30 seconds? Just, just, anytime you want to, just run out there. Just fucking, just, eh, who cares? Who gets a shit at this point? Uh, and it's right the same way. You speed an entire card full of elimination matches, and that's been fucking neutered too, so. Uh, but anyway, so here we are. This is the first Rumble. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into, uh, the buildup of this. Um... The one thing is, you know, Big John Stubb just returned to WWF. He's been gone for a couple years, I think, at this point. And, uh, you know, everybody just assumed, naturally, he was going to be a heel again. And he was going to reunite with Bobby Heenan. Because, you know, that was like his entire run with Bobby Heenan, and he's a bad guy. Uh, however, that was not the case. In fact, he started feuding with the Heenan family, uh, most notably uh, Andre. Which, that was no surprise there, because they were always on the opposite end anyways. Back, back when he was with the Heenan family, Andre was a good guy who was, you know, bad on him. So... I'd say that's probably the, the big factor right there. Uh, however, both guys went ahead and just entered themselves into the Rumble. And that's something I like. It was almost like it was a sign-up sheet back in the locker room. And you walk by, you're like, hey, the Rumble. Yeah, I'll do it. Like today, I, I mean, I get it today because now you know, there's a prize as you got to go ahead and you know, you, you, you fight for a shot at the title. And I, so I get that. So I guess, you know, the reason they have the whole qualify, you know, Royal Rumble qualifying match and shit like that, I, I get it, I guess. But I just like the idea that, you know, here anybody could be the main eventer. You know, you just walk back, hey, my name's Bruce Beefcake, and I, I, I'll hear myself in the Rumble, because fuck it. Um, so anyways, yeah, because we're both in it. Uh, a few of the other, I guess, notable ones that, you know, entered this thing. At the time, you know, Mr. Perfect was undefeated entering the, you know, in the Rumble. Uh, so, you know, he was looking to, you know, continue that streak, if you will. What better way to continue it than, you know, enter yourself in the Rumble and beat 29 other guys? Bad News Brown's another one they kind of, you know, highlighted because it, it, I forgot how big he was. Because, like, if you would have said anything to me, I mean, like, as far as, like, I guess his stature in the, uh, you know, on the roster. Because, you know, if you would have been, like, you know, Bad News Brown before I started doing the show and kind of, you know, re rehashing some of the old stuff here. Like, I just didn't realize, I just kind of forgot he actually did shit. Like, I don't know, I just, he always seemed like he was just kind of, like, there. Like, he was just there, extra. And I forgot that at one point he actually was kind of a badass on the thing. And of course, you know, the one thing they kept trying to highlight also was, you know, there are no friends. None. So, you know, and they're like, this match is perfect for him because he was kind of one of those few bad guys who didn't care if you were good or bad. He would just, you know, he was a heel that didn't like other heels. And that's a bad thing about WWF. They always had, like, you know, their, their faces on one side and their heels on the other. And they were just like, that was it. There was no in-between. If you're a good guy, you all make like other good guys and you hated all the bad guys and vice versa. And he was one of the first, you know, that was just like, I fucking hate everybody. So they definitely made him, like, you know, okay, this is his kind of match because, like, clearly... He has no friends anyway, so why does he care? Uh, and then, of course, once again, also highlighting the fact that, you know, there are, you know, no friends. You know, the fact that there's a high number of tag teams that was entering this thing. Uh, you know, you had the Bushwhackers, Demolition, Powers of Pain, the Brain Busters, uh, the Rockers, 
Twin Towers and Mega Powers, which, of course, uh, at this time, Twin Power, or sorry, Twin Powers, uh, Twin Towers and Mega Powers were like in the middle of their huge feuds. So uh, that was another thing, you know, everybody's looking out for. So, all right, so that's it. I'm not gonna go through every one of them because fuck it, you guys, this time's important. I don't want to waste it. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's jump into this thing. Let's get into the match. Uh, another thing I thought was interesting that I kind of forgot about with this one was because uh, I hardly remember the rest of them weren't like this. Uh, you know, you weren't allowed to have managers down there. That was like their big thing. Like, you know, a manager can accompany you to the ring, but then after that, they go back to the back, and then you go in inside yourself. Uh, so, yes, we start things off with Axe and Smash. And they was really wanting to prove that point that, you know, friendship didn't matter. Funny thing is, though, they're the only team, I mean, I guess Mega Power's a little bit in the end, but uh, this is the only team that really kind of turns on each other. Uh, everybody else actually does work together. <laughs> this is like the only team. And I remember even as a kid thinking... You know, why not work together? Like, here's the thing that separates then and now. Like, now, of course, there's a title shot on the line, your chance to headline WrestleMania. And, you know, there's even, you know, two occasions where the actual world title was on the line in the Rumble. So I get those, you know. But, like, here, it's like they're best friends. Like, back then, when you was a part of a tag team, tag team vision actually meant something. When you was in a tag team, you actually was, I mean, that was actually something. It didn't, you know, this put the air split you up like do now. It was like, you, know, you were actually with that team for a long time. Sometimes your entire run was just with that tag team. And I just think, like, you know, they're, they're boys. They're Chloe friends. Like, they're driving, you know, to the next town right after this. And I just remember as a kid, because once again, it's real to me. It's kayfabe, whatever. I'm thinking to myself, that had to be an awkward ride because, it's like, literally they could have worked together. They had the perfect spot. One and two. Now, granted, that's a long fucking line. I got to go through 28 guys, but, dude, if you work together... You can do it. And they didn't. They just turned. And I think myself, like, you know, there was no major prize. I'm just guessing, like, you know, for kayfabe reasons, the winner of the Royal Rumble gets the biggest paycheck, you know, of the year, probably. And then, of course, just bragging rights. And I'm like, dude, like, whoever, you know, the airplanes are getting their money, too. So it's like, we just combine the money. Like, at the end of the day, you can win it. Fuck it. I'll help you. We'll, we'll dominate the entire roster. And at the end, I'll hop out, and guess what? It's yours, and we'll just split the check. As a kid, that seemed logical to me. However, dude, Axe and Smash just lied into each other right off the fucking bat. And I was like, fuck, this is this is why. This is why you guys ain't gonna win. And of course, they kill, this, kill each other, and then number three is Andre the Giant, and you're like, yep, you guys are fucked now. And sure, I mean, I need to get the upper hand a little bit, but for the most part, it's just Andre batting him around, choke. Like, Andre's main offense in this entire match was choking and then sitting on you if he got you down. If you were unfortunate enough to be down, he was just going to sit on you. That was the main thing. Um, but yeah, and of course, he gets the first elimination of the night. He throws Smash out. Uh, so, you know, the match continues on. Uh, I'm trying to think of some major highlights here. Uh, Jake Roberts comes in. Jake the Snake gets in there, and dude just gets manhandled. I was really shocked. I forgot about that. Like, he gets no offense in this match. Like, gets in there, Andre gets a hold of him, and just chokes him out. Like, his entire two minutes that he comes in is just him getting choked, stepped on, choked, and then dumped out. And that's Jake the Snake's performance that year in the Rumble. And I was like, holy shit, I forgot he got his ass hand to him. Uh, he would eventually go out, come back with Damien. Because if you remember, he was few of uh, Andre. Of course, Andre was definitely afraid. And I believe they, like, in the storyline, he had a heart attack even. So I got to hang now. I got to get this real quick, guys. I'm sorry. I'm professional, but we're so early in the match that I, I couldn't just let that go. All right, take care of So anyways... Comes up Damien, and Andre says fuck it and jumps over the rope. He doesn't really jump. He hobbles over the top rope and gets out of a dodge quickly. Um, and we have, our, I believe, our very first self-elimination in the Rumble. So there it is. Uh, and then where Jake's, you know, forced to go back. Um, yeah, so, you know, the match goes. We got a really cool uh, part. Well, we got a, a really cool elimination coming up. Uh, I guess we should mention, though, first, that uh, this is the uh, main event debut of Shawn Michaels. And that's the thing I love about the Rumble was, it was like the one time of year that everybody got to shine. Like, you got the headline in event. Yeah, you're sharing the stage with 29 other guys, but guess what? And as a kid, I believed, you know, anything was possible, you had that chance to be like that, you know, to be the breakout star and win. Uh, and Michaels was always awesome in the Rumbles. Like, he really was. He was constantly getting battered around, thrown over, 
so many close calls. He even skins the cat like right off the bat in this thing. Like he just so comes so close. Uh, but him and Janae they work together. Uh, but my favorite, uh, one of my favorite eliminations was uh, so I believe at this point Michael's probably already out. But you got uh, the Brain Busters working on Marty Janae because at the time Brain Busters and uh, Rockers were feuding. So Arn has uh, Janetti up and over. Now all logically, you know, he could probably just push him. And that'd be the end of it. And that's what I love about the Rumble is any time of the year you can grab someone and toss them on the ropes, no problem. They always fucking fall out. Uh, and then somehow, and, then, and then even the way they all know would just be you just grab someone and throw them out. Every every day of the year you do that. But when it comes to the Rumble, you forget to do this, and then you get underneath them and you push them into the ropes and you try to lift them up and hoist them. And it's like, I have never seen you try that once. Not once. Jesus Christ. But here, we gotta do that. So, uh, he's got, you know, Gennady over, and then totally goes under the rope. Like, in between, and it's like pushing him. And of course, like, bring me back to when it was at the, uh, the previous year, when it was in NWA, they was, uh, doing the bunkhouse stampede, and they had that brilliant idea to try to pull a Luger out through the cage. And you're just like, this is gonna end disaster. But this one actually was pretty good. And then, sure enough, uh, Gennady, he's hanging, but he's hanging literally by, like, his feet. His feet are, like, hooked over the rope. And then, of course, they eventually get him out, and it was just, it was awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, trying to think of some other big highlights without going through match, you know, beat by beat. Uh, Savage, you know, world champion, he enters in there. Hogan does as well. They made it clear early on that, you know, if they get in each other's way... They're going to, you know, they, they made it clear right off the bat, which I thought was kind of odd. Like, you know, I know there's, at this point there is some dissension within the group, but I'm like, you guys do realize that, you know, A, as world champion and former world champion, and basically they're both just the faces of the company right now, they're the most hated people, you know, as far as kayfabe goes, in the locker room, because they're the top guys. You take out the top guy, you become, you know, the top guy. So you just got to think everybody's gunning for them. And it's true because, dude, like, I just remember as I'm watching this, thinking, like, Bushwhacker Luke just goes full on heel and just starts, like, attacking Hogan every chance he got. Luke, of all people, is just like, fuck Hogan. Like, literally three or four times he goes out of his way to attack and blindside Hogan. Kobe Beware does the same thing. And I was like, wouldn't you guys just, like, partners, like, a couple months ago at the Survivor Series? But guess what? There are no friends in the Rumble, so it makes sense. But this is interesting. Like, all, all the faces... Who are normally good guys are just like a jumping on Hogan. I thought that was just great. Um, and then of course we also get the uh, record for uh, the shortest entrance with uh, Warlord. Warlord comes out there, walks to the ring, gets up on the apron, fucking does his pose and everything because he's fucking Warlord, powerful as fuck. Steps in between the ropes and gets clotheslined over by Hogan. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, what the fuck? Like, I love the, I was always a fan of the Warlord. I don't get why he wasn't bigger than he was. I guess because he's willing to do shit like this. Uh, I can literally think to myself, like, if all the wrestlers in there you had, Honky Tonk Man, you know, Greg, I love Greg Valentine, but let's face it, like, he was never going up the card. He was, he was on that slow descent down. Like, he never quite just plummeted down to the bottom card, but he was on that slow decline through the years, like, like molasses just going down a stained glass window. It was just like he—he he, he gonna take forever for him to get down there, but he eventually did. But like him, you could have dumped him. No, they went for Warlord, big big power guy. Uh, but yeah, and then of course uh, I think Mr. Perfect was the one that set the record this year for uh, longest. He was in there the longest, and I think he's only like 27 minutes. If I'm wrong, correct me down below. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, he would know that. That's, that's a record that would almost get broke almost every year until I believe Flair. Maybe Michaels, and then they would kind of have that for a while. But uh, Warlord's record of you know Shores was there for fucking ever, at least until I think Santino Morella broke it. But uh, yeah, but there, there's those. And then uh, Hogan sets the record uh, for most eliminations in the Rumble uh, this year with a nine. And I don't know how long he held that for. I don't know if someone broke it before Kane got a hold of it because I know once Kane got it, he, Kane had it forever until Roman Reigns broke it. But, uh, yeah, Hogan dominates this fucking year. Uh, so, we get to a point where uh, it's down now. Because there's always, not always, but it seems like a lot of times in the Rumble, there's always like this like midway point where like the ring gets pretty much cleared out. And then it's kind of like the second half of the Rumble. Even though this is kind of later in the game. This is probably, like, you know, really two-thirds. But uh, we're down to three people in the ring. It's uh, Bad News Brown. Macho Man and Hulk Hogan. Now, Bad News Brown's got Macho Man, you know, on the, or, you know, up on the ropes a little bit. 
He doesn't have him like all the way flipped over. His view's not as good. You can tell it's Macho Man and Bad News Brown, right? Like clearly. And Hogan walks over and just dumps them both. Now I'm okay with that, right? That's fine. But the first thing, you know, clearly Jesse Ventura on commentary is just like, wow, Hogan just blindsided his partner. You know, the ego of this man just trying to get rid of his partner. And then Grill Monsoon, like instead of just saying which he will go on to say later, but instead of saying it first, he instead of just saying, hey, it's every man for himself, you know, he goes to, I don't think he knew it was Macho Man. I'm like, how could he not know it was Macho Man? And then I start thinking, when I was a kid, I didn't really put much thought into it. I was, because I, I was very swayed by what they wanted me to believe. So I was like, yeah, okay, it makes sense. You know, it's every man for himself. Savage shouldn't have got upset. But then, yeah, because Savage gets pissed. Savage gets pissed, gets right back in the ring, and gets right in Hogan's face. Like, fucking touching him in the face and shit. I love it. Uh, but I remember thinking, like, you know, that's pretty shitty. Like, dude, you lost. But then, and I'm getting to that in a second. But I, right now I'm watching it, and it just, my mind goes to 92. When it was uh, Sid Justice, Ric Flair, and Hogan, the final three in the match. And, of course, Hogan and Flair are going at it. And then Sid just comes up behind Hogan and dumps him over. And Girl Monsoon's like, wow, it's a Pearl Harbor job or whatever he said. you know. And I'm just like, what? Like, didn't he just do the same thing? And dude, Hogan was pissed. Hogan was, like, crying like a baby outside and fucking pulled out Sid and shit. And I just remember thinking, like, well, like, and at the time, it, you know, it made, it, to me, it made sense when I was a kid because I was like, yeah, you can't screw Hogan over. Hogan's Jesus of wrestling. You don't turn on Jesus, Judas. Come on. But uh, as an adult, I'm like, well, like, Hogan, like, that's kind of shitty because I think myself, even, okay, let's just go kayfabe with it. Okay, yeah, it's every man for himself. Yes, there is some, you know, strain between Hogan and Savage. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, Hogan, you know, he was back in his locker room. He's got the monitor on. He knows that, you know, Big Boss Man and Akeem have not been out there yet. Not yet. He knows they're gunning for him. And I just doubt that whoever's left is coming after him as well. You know, he's had battles with Big John Studd in the past. Even they are both faces. That's still a pretty big opponent. Ted DiBiase is another one. Hercules is in there. Like, he's got some fucking, you know, beef coming his way. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I'm thinking, like, you know, the, you know these people ain't out there yet, wouldn't you want Savage on your side? Because you're like, you know, I'll have a, a guy help me. We'll get to the end, and we get to the end, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll, we'll clash then. And I was like, no, it's all about me. And he dumps him over. So Savage is pissed off at first. Elizabeth comes from the back trying to, you know, separate. So finally, they hug. Savage is like, you know, I'm sorry, you know, good luck to you, and he, he walks out. Well, out comes Boss Man. We get the Hogan Boss Man, sh you know, showdown. They've been feuding. And, for you know, for the most part, it's just Hogan beating shit out of Boss Man. Like, literally just, it's it's not much of a contest. Until the next one is Akeem. Now, I, I can't quite remember, because I didn't watch the whole event this time around. Uh, they just showed the part toward the end there. But uh, I remember DiBiase, when he first pulled, like, he drew his number, he was pissed. And I can't remember if he was trading through, like, he kept buying higher, you know, numbers throughout, or if it was just one big thing. But either way, uh, this last transaction was with Slick. And I thought that was interesting, because I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, he, he saw his number, and it works perfectly for the story. He saw his number, wasn't happy with it, asked around, he found out, like, either Bossman or Akeem had their number. And he goes, well, mine's right next to you. What does your partner have? Oh, your partner has number 30. Wow. Tell you what, I'll buy that from you. You two can enter together. Do a lot of damage because you guys are twin fucking power or twin towers. I'll come in at 30, and then you guys work for me, and I'll give you a bigger paycheck than I'll pay you here, and I can win the Rumble. And it's brilliant. It really is a brilliant plan. Uh, so we got uh, the twin towers out there, and they just murder Hogan. I, I, I can't say murder. Hogan dominates for a little bit because he's Hogan, and he has to. It's like in his contract. But they eventually overpower him. They beat him up. And then they dump him out legitimately. There's no tomfoolery. There, no, it was just they. they it's look at the draw, and they dump him out. A clean dump out. He's gone. He throws the biggest fucking hissy fit. He's pissed because he lost the match. For, like he just, in my opinion, he what he did to Savage was worse than what they did to him. Like he really did kind of screw Savage over. You know, not technically, I guess, but still, on some kind of level, I feel like he screwed Savage. However. The fact that he lost Fair Square to his two nemesis, like two guys he's feuding with, just tore. It was like when he got eliminated from the Survivor Series and how he was all pissed, bent out of shape there. So he does the same thing. He just starts fucking throwing tamper. And then he pulls out the big boss man, right? Pulls out the. Eliminates the big boss man from the outside. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's even worse. And I'm like, is this what he's trying to teach the kids of America now? 
Like, it don't matter. If you lose, just run back in there and make sure the person that screwed you over doesn't win either. Like, screw him over and make sure he doesn't win. That's what happens. He literally does that. And I was like, wow, that's pretty dickish. And thing is great, because Jesse Ventura jumps on that immediately. He's like, that's not fair. Hogan's out of the mat. And thing is, it, it's like, yeah, Ventura is right. I'm noticing that a lot, too. Like, I'm noticing now as an adult, I'm agreeing with Ventura a lot. Like, he's not a heel. He has his own point of view, and I just happen to agree with that quite a bit. And this is one of them. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, Hogan had no right to do that. Shoot the guy out of there. So, you know, he's like, I'm going back. He's, he keeps saying, I'm going back in there. At one point, Beefcake's the next one that comes out, Bruce Beefcake. So, like, you know, Beefcake's like trying to, like, hey, you know, Hogan, you should probably go back or whatever. But, yeah, and that's, and that's how that one ends. He literally eliminates Bossman. I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's pretty shitty there, Hogan. That's pretty douchey. That's that's douchebag Hogan right there. Uh, yeah, and that's that, that was that right there. And I was like, hmm. The interesting thing here, though, is is you know now we're, we're we're left with like you know the last ten of the group or whatever. You know, on paper, it looks like anybody can win this. And the weird thing was, these weren't all like top draws. Like these weren't all the main. These weren't really the big guys. With the exception of maybe Akeem, who at this point was working, you know, the angle with the you know mega powers, uh, and DiBiase, who was just previously like literally this guy's main evented every pay per view since WrestleMania four. Like he's found himself in that top spot every time. And I guess maybe Big John Stud because of he's returning or whatever. But the rest of the ro roster that's in this match, they're not like main event guys. Or even people you would think in the back of your mind that you could win. But that's what made it interesting because you're like, wow, these are the ones who made it. Your you know, brew of beefcakes, your Hercules, your Red Roosters, Barbarian. Rick Martel. I mean, like, literally, it just seems like this is like the who's who of uh, mid-card to low-card guys. But they were all the final dudes in the Rumble. And I, I thought that was really interesting. I really liked that. Dude, Red Rooster gets his ass to his hand, dude. Like, no one must have took him seriously at all. Like, at all. They're just like, dude, fuck you. Fucking Rooster. Like, I'm not getting beat up by you. And literally, he gets, he gets, he gets his ass to hand to him. Like, the entire match is just him getting his ass beat. It's sad. It really is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, John Stuck comes out, number 27. And he goes right for Akeem. And the funny thing about that is, that's all he does the entire match for the most part. Like, 98% of the match is just him beating up Akeem in the corner. And I just had the feeling that, like, before this match even got started backstage, he just told everybody, listen, when I come out there, I'm just going to fight Akeem. Don't, don't mess with me. Uh, if you try to hit me, I'm going to no-sell you, and then I'm just going to push you out of the way. And I'm going to fight Akeem. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. And that's what he does. That's exactly what he does. Like, I'm just like, what the... Because the whole time he's fighting Akeem. Like, Akeem's getting no offense. This is bigger on stud... Beat him up, bear hug, choke, punch, bear hug, choke, repeat. Over and over and over and over. And every now and then, like, someone will run like, hey, and they'll jump in there and, like, hit Big Joe and, like, nothing. And he just turns around and, like, shoves him. And he goes back, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, he didn't want to really work this match at all. Like, he just wanted to stay in a corner and collect that paycheck, I guess. I have no idea. But it was just kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, and then number 30 turned out to be Deviance. Like, he did pay for it. The interesting thing, was, uh, thing here was... Uh, you know, there's booking no managers down there. However, old Virgil's down there, and of course Jesse Ventura, you know, made the point like, hey, he's technically not a manager. He's a bodyguard, and it worked. So he was down there at ringside the whole time. We come down to the final four. The final four was Akeem, Big John Stud, the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, and Rick Martel. A hell of a Final Four, if you ask me. Just an odd kind of combination, but it seems real. Like, that's what I liked about the Rumbles. Like, especially back then, they're just, they just seem more real. Less predictable. Because, in all honesty, if, if you had to predict this thing, I would have went DiBiase, probably. Or Akeem. Uh, I didn't think they would have pushed Big John Studd. And, of course, you know, unfortunately, well, I'll get to that, I guess, later on. But, you know, it was just like it had to be, you know, DiBiase, you think. Of course, uh, Akeem throws out Martel. And he double team uh, Big John Stud for a little bit until I, I believe it was some miscommunication. I can't quite remember. I can't recall. Watching too much wrestling lately, there. It's all kind of blending together. But, uh, anyways, uh, John Stud takes out Akeem and then turns around and takes out Million Dollar Man. So, Big John Stud is the winner of the first ever Royal Rumble. Virgil runs in there because he's like, I'm going to do something. And gets his ass just handed to him. Uh, so, that is how we end the Royal Rumble. Uh, as far as the fallout goes from this thing, because all these guys went on to do something at the Rumble for the most part. Uh, first, I guess the thing we got to talk about, obviously, would be the Mega Powers exploding. Uh, on an uh, episode of the main event, 
and what a main event it really was because it really was like the two biggest, you know, this was the biggest, you know, feud right now going. Uh, Mega Powers took on the Twin Towers tag match. And somehow during the course of the match, Miss Elizabeth, you know, gets knocked off the apron and she gets hurt. Uh, unconscious, so Hogan drops down, picks her up, and takes her to the back. Uh, which, I'm not going to lie, once again, as a kid, bought it. Like, yeah, he's doing the right thing. As an adult, I'm like, dude, hey, she shouldn't have been up there. One, should have been up there. Two, they have personnel that specializes in helping people out when they get hurt. You're Hulk Hogan. You go over to the commentator's table and be like, hey, get some help out here. Grab a stagehand. Hey, we need some help out here. Get get some paramedics. That's it. That's all you have to do. He takes up on something to take a picture out and not carry her away. Savage on mean hands at the same time as getting his ass just hand to him. Savage crawls to the corner. There's nobody there to tag. Somehow Savage survives this onslaught. Finally, Hogan does come back. When Savage kind of gets the upper hand, he goes to, you know, he sees Hogan's back. He goes to tag out, but doesn't just tag out. He bitch slaps Hogan, which is just fucking beautiful. Love it. Just fucking knocks a taste out of his mouth. Gets out of the ring, takes his belt, and just leaves. Now Hogan's the one who's left behind. Uh, of course, you know, now he's abandoned. He's got to do two against one. But because he's Hulk Hogan, he wins the match. Uh, and this really was kind of the downfall of the Twin Towers in the main event scene. Because, I mean, it, 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 you know, kayfabe, it just looks horrible for him. Because, like, literally, they had the 2 on one advantage the entire match, pretty much. And they couldn't get the job done still. Like, even, like, you know, dominating Savage, couldn't beat him. Dominating Hogan, couldn't beat him. This couldn't beat them. And then eventually they, they end up getting beat. Uh, so, yeah, that was the end of their, their top, you know, their run at the top. Uh, but anyway, so after the match, Hogan goes back to uh, confront Savage and see what's going on. The two get in a huge argument. And then, of course, Savage eventually just attacks Hogan from behind, beats him down. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and this was not in the uh, WrestleMania 5 package, but I believe uh, Bruce Beefcake even goes back there to help Hogan out. Like, you make sure he's okay. And Savage just beats the shit out of him, too. Like, Savage just went off. And, of course, the two would meet. The Mega Powers would finally explode at WrestleMania 5. And we'll cover that in a further episode. Uh, Andre Giant and Jake Roberts, you know, they were, they were feuding before this match, during the match, and then they would take this into WrestleMania as well. Uh, and, of course, the winner of the uh, Royal Rumble, Big John Studd, would be the special guest referee of that match. And uh, Jake Roberts would win uh, via disqualification, I believe. I think I remember correctly, Andre just choked him out, and or got a five stud, or whatever the case was, but he got himself disqualified, so that was... That was the end of that right there. Uh, other participants in the Rumble who would go on to the WrestleMania matches, yeah, you had Hercules uh, defeating King Haku. Uh, the Twin Towers met uh, with the Rockers, and Twin Towers got the win. Uh, I believe you had uh, Million Dollar Man, Ted, Di yeah, Ted DiBiase. And that, well, once again, he was at the top. Was, and this was like his last you know, main event for a while, and he would start plummeting down. Uh, went after Bruce Beefcake for whatever reason. I don't remember the reason for the feud, but uh, that would end in a double count out, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see, you had uh, Mr. Perfect defeat the Blue Blazer. Uh, once again, he, I think he was still trouting the fact that he was uh, undefeated, but the fact that, you know, you he, he don't count the Royal Rumble as being defeated because it was a Royal Rumble. It was a battle royal against Hot Rumble. He didn't get pinned, he didn't submit, so he's like, I'm still undefeated. So he had that going right there. Uh, you had the Bushwhackers. Uh, they took on, they took on, defeated uh, the Fabulous Rujos. Uh, what else? You had the Brain Busters take on Strike Force. Uh, which the Brain Busters won. That's when Strike Force exploded. Uh, you had uh, Demolition defending the uh, tag titles against uh, the uh, Powers of Pain. They also had Fuji as their third man. So it was a handicap two and three match, but Demolition, psh, they kept the titles. Even after turning on each other in the Rumble, they, you know, they were still a dominant tag team afterwards. Uh, let's see, you had a. Uh, Hong Kong Man and Greg Valentine team up. I don't think they were quite rhythm and blues yet. But they took on the Heart Foundation in a losing effort. Uh, Red Rooster took on Bobby the Brain Heenan in a joke of a match. Beat him like 33 seconds. Uh, and then uh, Rugged Ronnie Garvin, which I forgot to mention, he was in this Rumble match back in the main event spot. Uh, didn't last long in the Rumble, though. Uh, he took on Dino Bravo. And then I think the last match I'm leaving now is probably... Bad News Brown, or uh, Bad News Bears. Bad News Brown, uh, and uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, and they, they fought to a double DQ, if I remember correctly, so. Uh, if I'm leaving something now, I'm sorry, but that's a lot of Royal Rumble participants to try to follow up on. Uh, so, yes, what did I think overall of this match? I loved it. Like I said, I'm a fan of the Rumbles, especially the older ones. Uh, and once again, it was just real back then. Like, now, it's just like, 
there's a, like you know I, I'm all for the surprise nostalgic entrance. It's like they're not adding anything to it. Like when Kevin Nash came back as Diesel, I forget what year it was. What did that even do? You get to see him as Diesel again? Did he add anything to the match? No, he did not. In fact, he didn't even last long because he's 40, 50 fucking years old and can't wrestle anymore. His knees are just shit. And that's no disrespect against Kevin Nash. I'm a huge Nash fan. I really am. Uh, he gets a lot of hate online because he was the booker in WCW. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, which don't get me wrong. I mean, he probably did a lot of dumb shit, but it's, I still like him. I'm a fan. Uh, but I don't want him in my Rumble. Sorry. Just don't. Uh, not at this age. Uh, so, yeah, no, like they said, back here, back in the day, Especially in 89, it just seemed real. It, it, it still had that air of realness. Um, shocked that Hogan didn't win, because I, I, I watched this later on. Like, I didn't watch this with... Um, like, it was later I came across this one, uh, for whatever reason. But Hogan just always won. Like, literally, he dominates the next two years. Pretty much dominates 92, but then he can start out the end. But it was just like, it, it was Hogan's event, you know? So the fact that Hogan loses like midway through this thing was a shocker to me at the time. Uh, but, you know, like I said, overall, damn good thing. Uh, the one that is kind of surprising, and I mean, I, I've never quite found this out or found out. If you guys know, let me know down below. But, uh, like, was there a plan to push Big John Stud, like, after the Rumble? Because he's just an odd choice to win. Because, I mean, I, I want to say I know. This was his last pay-per-view match as far as participating uh, or you know being a, 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 a combatant. But he made it, I think his last appearance was at WrestleMania 5. He was just a referee. But I think it was maybe shortly afterwards. I don't know how long he, he survived after that, but he died of cancer. And, which, you know, that sucks. But I just remember thinking, like, you know, did, did, was there plans to bump him up? Because, I mean, this seems like an odd choice. Especially when you look back on him because it was just like he did nothing after this. And so I don't know if there was, a, if there was plans at some point to maybe push him. You know, it may not main event, obviously, but, you know. Because you think about, like, the year before, Axel Jim Duggan won. They didn't do shit with him, like, at all. Ever. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. They, they're just like, yeah, give it to John Studd. He's back, you know. Well, but I don't know. It just seems kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, overall, like I said, it's a, a very enjoyable. And, like I said, it's around this era anyways that my memories of actually watching it on TV, staying current with it. Because, I mean, I've been watching wrestling since I was in diapers. And I don't remember any of that shit, but I, you know, I've, I've been told that hey, you know, yeah, we used to watch, you know, Saturday Night Main Event. You'd sit there in your high chair and you'd watch it, and we watch it, blah blah blah. So I, you know, I know I've watched it since then, but this is like around the time I start remembering. Like I actually had the memories of like, oh yeah, I do remember, you know, seeing this or vaguely remember this feud going on, and actually being there, you know, for watching it. So uh, yeah, like I said at this point, uh, yeah, I, I love it. Royal Rumble's great. Uh, highly recommend it, all that stuff. Let me know what you guys think of the Rumble. Drop the comments down below. Let me know what you thought about the event. And guys, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night. We're going back to the NWA. Or the WCW. I don't know. Doesn't matter. We're going back for their own Rumble. And I'm talking about the Chi Town Rumble. Chi Town Rumble. So there it is. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.